Hey there, we are assembling a Fender Jaguar parts caster from start to finish, let's go. Hey there, how's it going? So this has been on my list for years and it's finally time to check out my first Fender Jaguar. Rather than buying one, in this video I'm assembling my own from start to finish. So if you are new here, be sure to subscribe and like the video and share it around if you do find it helpful. This is gonna be a huge, massive, massively huge video. So make sure you use all the timestamps. Everything's gonna be timestamped. First, we're gonna go over all the parts, the pricing. I'm gonna do Fender Mod Shop comparison. If you don't know what that is, so I'll explain it. Uh, we're gonna do the assembly, the setup, the specs, a gallery of how it looks at the end, and tones, and then my final thoughts. So save this or bookmark it, whatever you wanna do with this video. Just keep it for reference if you wanna use this in the future. And just a quick mention, there's no sponsor for this video. Everything was purchased out of pocket from different places. I'll let you know where. Basically funded by this channel. And that's from people watching or buying merch or members. It all helps. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I always like to mention where I get my stuff from to make it clear. I always like to mention where the gear comes from or who I bought it from. Uh, with that being said, this is going to be the biggest, most complicated build I've ever done. So let's get going. Here we go. This is the table. Got all my stuff and it's moving closer to you because it's zooming in. Look at that. All right, let's talk about all the stuff we got, all the parts. So the first part I'm going to show you is the body that I got. And I got this from the Stratosphere Parts and just taking it out here. Um, and uh, the pick guards here, they accidentally uh, packaged two pick guards together. At first I thought it was a six ply pick guard. I'm looking, look at the size of this thing, but no. But yeah, it's two pick guards stuck together. So I guess I'm gonna have to build two Jaguars now. There's the uh, trim bar, and uh, here's a close up if you wanna take a look at that. That's what it is. It's a Fender Vintera 60s modified HH body. So originally it had two humbuckers in it, but I'm gonna be putting in single coil pickups. So it's got the hardware attached, uh, the bridge and the trim system and the neck plate and the four screws, but I'm gonna be taking those off so I can show you how it all works together. Here's the neck. This is a brand new American Pro neck. It's uh, Jaguar, Rosewood, and it's got the block inlays. That's really what attracted me to it, and that's why I wanted to get this one. And um, here we go, taking it out. I'm gonna do a quick inspection. There's a few things I always look at. I did a previous video because I found, uh, I thought there was dirt on this 20th fret here, but it's actually a gouge that's cut out of it, and I'll show you closer up, take a look. That's no good for anybody. Anyways, I sent it back. It was no problem returning it to the Stratosphere parts, and they sent me a new neck, so I'm gonna show that in a second here. So, hey, what time is it? Look at my watch, I don't know. So here's a couple, I think it was a week and a half later, another neck came in, same part, same model. They opened it to inspect it, you can see the orange tape. That's not orange tape, what am I talking about? Green tape. Here's the model, and uh, if you want to look at those specs, go back and pause it if you want to see. So I was just making sure this one's all good. The fretwork is perfect. These necks are amazing. The satin finish on the back. So here's the pickups. This is a 65 Jaguar pickup set, and it's like a vintage style. I can see it's kind of low output. And there's the output EQ on the back, and uh, these are nice uh, Fender pickups from Fender. Did I mention that? Here's the strings I'm using, NYXLs from D'Addario, and they're 10 to 46. Here's some extra cable that I bought. I end up not needing it, but um, that's another story. Here's the, uh, the tuners, and that's what they are. They're classic gear, machine heads. They look like, they look like the classic stuff, but uh, they're modern. So there's the uh, tree, string trees. Here's the trem and the, the bridge. And that came with the body, so I know it's gonna work with it perfectly. Again, there's the uh, trim bar. So I've already looked at the neck, but I wanted to show the stamp on the bottom. November 12th, 2020. So it's new old stock, brand new, but uh, nobody bought them. I don't know, I think they're really nice. Maybe Jaguars aren't that popular. So here's the body close up. You can see it's routed for two humbuckers. And uh, it's a lighter weight. That's why one of the reasons I picked this one, I also wanted a blue body. So here's a couple pieces of foam that I'm gonna be uh, putting inside the cavities and the pickups will mount on that. Uh, there's the pick guard again. Here is the electronics from a company called Hoagland. 
custom. And I ordered this on Reverb. Here's what everything is. It's three chrome plates and they're pre-wired. So I'm gonna be doing some soldering, but I left the heavy lifting to these guys. I looked at the wiring on a Jaguar and I'm like, this is, uh, you know, time is money. So I spent the money instead of using my time to get frustrated. And these are amazing. The quality and the workmanship, perfect. It looks like a little toy car. Look at that. So that's the three plates. We'll go over them. We'll show you exactly what you need to solder in. It comes with really good instructions. Highly recommended. So there we go. You're looking at it going away. And uh, let's get into uh, the pricing. Let's talk about how much everything costs. All right, here's a breakdown of all the prices. So you can see I got the Fender American Professional Jaguar neck, rosewood block, block blah, blah, block, block inlays, um, and the body, and then the cream pick guard, all from Stratosphere Parts. I got it as one order. You can see the total price there, including the, uh, it did cost me uh, $54 to send it back, the bad neck, that is. So after tax and uh, conversion and everything, Duties, taxes, fees, uh, everything, 1794 19 Canadian, okay? And then um, all the other parts are listed there. You got the tuners, you got the pickups, you got the pre-wired controls, string guide, control knobs, grand total, 23-32-41 Canadian. And in U.S. funds, today I did conversion, it's 1805-00. For some reason, exactly 00. zero. So there you go, that's the price. And now we're gonna compare it to something similar if you bought it from, if you put together your own guitar, I mean, on the Fender Mod Shop. Now say you wanted to go to the Fender Mod Shop and build your own Jaguar. And uh, if you didn't know what the Fender Mod Shop is, it's Fender's website that allows you to customize an American made guitar and then have it sent to you. So you get to pick everything. So we're gonna pick something similar to what I created. So we got a sonic blue body and I picked the Jaguar model. Can't choose exactly the same specs and settings. I can't choose the rosewood neck with the block inlays. They don't offer that, but I'll just choose, you know, a rosewood neck, maple modern C. And then, uh, so we got the same color. We got the same rosewood neck basically. And then looking for the, uh, the pick guard here. Uh, doing a cream. I, I don't think they had a cream. No, they just have parchment. So close enough and then uh, the plastic color aged white or white um, Kind of the opposite of what I picked, but it's it's the only options here. So pickups only offer one option the V mod uh, They do offer the classic gear tuners, which I have on mine and The bridge is a different bridge. It's got the vintage style floating trim um, and you can see the controls are totally different. They got a three-way selector and then a, you know, a one toggle switch. It's not as complex as the wiring I've done. So grand total, you can see there, um, I acknowledge, damn right. Uh, proceed to cart. This is if I was pretending to, to actually buy it. And you can see the total price here, $20.99. You'd also get a, an elite style case, like a really nice hard shell case. So let's take it and uh, spin it around and take a, closer look at it and see what you actually get. Um, you can take photos of it through the mod shop and then save them and post them and tease people. Be like, hey, look at me. I'm making this guitar. Well, I'm not making it, but somebody else is gonna make it for me and I'm picking it so I can have it. I don't know why you save the pictures, but anyways, here's a close up of uh, what it would look like. So yeah, three-way toggle, one, one button kind of thing, button kind of thing. There you go. So, you know, this is kind of fun. I, I've used this site to uh, model all the builds I've done. I've never actually bought from Fender Mod Shop because you can't order in Canada, but let's just take it and see what you can do with it. Let's spin it, spin it around. Okay, never mind. Let's, let's make it for real. Now, this is where the real work starts. This is the majority of the work involved. Um, it takes a while to buy the stuff and figure out what you're going to do and you know, choose all the parts and see if you can get them, but then actually putting it together and making sure it all works, it's, it's the majority of the work. So just loosening the screws, you can see in the neck pocket there, it's kind of rough, but it uh, doesn't really matter. It's all cosmetic on the inside, it won't show. So I've loosened the four screws and um, this should just slide right in. And it's a really good fit on this one. Sometimes the neck pocket can be a little bit loose, this one is really nice. It's pretty snug, and that's kind of what you want. That's ideal. It's gonna have good contact, 
and then I'm just putting it down here trying not to uh, you know you just want to be careful not to have the neck flip up or sideways or anything and break the sides of, of the neck pocket because that would suck and it would look horrible so attaching the four screws and then your neck is connected sometimes I use paraffin wax but um, I didn't in this case it, the, the screws were going in pretty well so a little bit of hand tightening to finish it off there some people like to use power tools they like to use a drill to do this I never do I just you know I'm just cautious I just want to use my hands use your muscles and uh, it's good enough, you don't need power tools. I guess you'd save some time, but here I'm just taking off these little stupid stickers on the back of the neck plate, and you can see the residue that it leaves. I've got this stuff, it's this uh, oil called Gugon. I'm not making up that name. It sounds like a name I can make up, but Gugon, and uh, it's like the citric-based. I'm sure it's not good. It's probably really terrible, and uh, you don't want to get it on your skin, and you probably don't want to touch the, the finish on the body either so just uh, applying a little bit on the metal there and um, it's not met it didn't eat through it didn't melt the metal so I, it's probably okay um, yeah it's fine I've done it many times uh, so there you go nice and clean I can actually use this as a mirror now so when I'm playing guitar I can take a look and you know check my makeup or see if I have any spinach in my teeth whatever okay next we're doing the tuners and um, I've bought many sets of Fender tuners. They've always been really nice. I haven't had any issues. This one, I don't know what's going on here. They put some masking tape just to hold in. I guess it was falling out. I've never seen this before. It, it was so hard to get them out. I had uh, a struggle here. You can see I'm just getting them out. So each uh, tuner has a tuner. It's got a bushing and it's got a little screw. Not a screw, but a, like a washer kind of. That uh, No, a nut, a bolt. I, I don't know my terms for uh, for tools and stuff anyways let's get a closer look here words don't matter they're just words it's all it's all words looks so nice close up look how cool it is it's got two little pegs like two little posts you can't screw it up except i do screw it up so i'll show you how i screwed it up but it's not a big deal so got all six there just going to turn the neck over and you can see you got the the hole and then the two smaller holes so just start putting them in and already that's wrong because uh, two of the four, no, two of the six have these end pieces and they have to go at the ends. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll compare what an end piece looks like, an end tuner versus a regular tuner. See, it's got that little, kind of like a four-sided shape at the end there. That's got to go at the end because it's going to otherwise bulge into the other ones. The other ones are flat. They're just rectangles. And uh, the other end one, see, it's got the same thing. There you go. So then you just uh, take a bushing and uh, you're going to need a, a socket, wrench, that should fit and then we'll just attach them quickly and again I do this by hand you can use a power tool if you want um, I just choose not to because my hands are so strong and I like the workout I like making more work why not there we go I'm gonna do all six and I thought uh, change the camera angle look how cinematic this is it's, you feel like you're there done okay let's move on to uh, getting some of the hardware installed in the body so what's the first thing we're gonna do First thing we're going to do is look at the bridge close up. You can see there, it's got two pegs that uh, screw into the body. Luckily, they've already been done. You know what? I don't think you can buy Jaguar bodies uh, from Fender. They don't sell them as like a stock item. So you'd have to buy something like this, a used body or something somewhere else. A no-name, a non-Fender branded uh, Jaguar body, something like that. Anyways, that's uh, out of scope. Um, and it's got this... Uh, this number on the back here, an LPB002. I think that was the name of a James Bond character, but uh, I could be wrong. So uh, there you go, just pops on like that, and the strings will hold it down. And now here's the uh, the trem system. I've never actually seen the inside of a, a trem system. It's the same thing you find on a Jaguar or Jazzmaster, maybe a maybe a Mustang. I'm not sure if they use it, but you can see it's got the lock mechanism, and it's got the screw. Uh, sorry, the spring with the screw, you can adjust the tension so you can make it stronger or weaker. And, uh, and then it's got a bunch of screws to connect to the body. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to connect six screws and then we'll maybe adjust the tension later, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Fits in perfectly, so there we go. One, two, three, four, five six see I didn't lie I never lie about how many screws 
I, I never lie about screwing a trem system into a, a body on a Jaguar. There you go. I mean, what would be the point of lying anyways? If I said there was 12 screws or you'd see there's six, it's right there. Anyways, let's move on. So here's one of these uh, mats you can get. They're just like, you know, for fitness or something. I don't know, but I took one and I just sliced it up. I'm like, screw it. I need it. I need that foam. So I'm using it to uh, put the pickups in and you kind of put them underneath the pickups. And then I've got to figure out where the pickups are going to sit because these are single coil pickups and they're not the humbuckers that were in this body originally. So I got to kind of create an alignment and make sure they're going to go and then, you know, put the holes for the screws and it's a little bit of work, but it's, uh, you know, it's like my crafting skills coming out here. So here's some double sided tape I found in the garage. I don't even know why I had it, but it's going to work. You can just use anything if you want to, you know, you can just use masking tape. I'm sure uh, you can use electrical tape. You could probably use scotch tape. It doesn't really matter. Just something to uh, keep it in place because it's going to get screwed down anyways when the pickup goes on top. So it doesn't really matter. It's kind of just holding it in place for now. But uh, so I'm trying two pieces, you know, it's probably like half inch thick and uh, there's a close up of it. And then we're going to take the, the pickups out and I couldn't remember which one is the neck pickup, which one's the bridge pickup. So I took out the instructions and the only way to know is the bridge pickup has a yellow wire on it. So it's going to go on the bottom there. So let's just fit it in and uh, route the wires around it. You got to be careful. You don't want to pull too hard on these wires and pickups, you know, they could be fragile. You don't want to break one. I broke one years ago. I know I, I broke the wire by just pulling on it too hard. So I'm always careful about that. So here we go, trying to line it up first time. And then we're just going to put a couple of screws in the pick guard to hold it in place because I know that's where it's going to go. And I'm just taking a sharp little uh, uh, screwdriver here and just kind of marking the holes where they're going to go for the screws that are, that are going to hold into the uh, the pick pickups. And they're going to be body mounted. They're not mounted in the pick guard. Maybe you can't tell that or maybe you already knew. And uh, so there we go. So I'm going to take the four screws stick them in and see if this is good enough, if uh, we've got enough height, because basically the uh, the foam is acting, instead of having springs, you got this foam so you can raise and lower it. So checking it out for the first time, trying it here, just connecting the screws, and uh, we're gonna find out in just a second. I know the suspense is probably killing you, but did I use enough foam? That's, that's the question. Um, you can see the, pickup is kind of sunken in so I'm gonna say no because uh, I'm I don't know what I'm doing right this is the first time doing this and then right away I realized no that's not enough I gotta I gotta take some more so take this uh, fitness mat I guess I'm not gonna be working out anymore just gonna chop it up and uh, I got like 30 of those things They're, you know and um, just gonna cut a couple more squares and take the double-sided tape do the same thing and double it up basically we're gonna stack it on top of the other one and then we're good to go that should be it we should be done that's that should be it no more okay and I'll just let you watch okay at this point I realize screws aren't just going to grab into the body so I got to do some pilot holes there with my screwdriver and the foam is too thick two layers is too thick so I'm basically halving it now it's going to be one and a half pieces of foam that should be the ideal height and uh, it's height not height I've heard, heard I've heard people say that so here we go this is this is pretty much the final height for the pickups I've got the ideal height and there we go all right so there you go. You can do it. Anybody can do that. I think I did a pretty good job first time. Let's get into the electronics. We're getting real here now. So we're going to start with, uh, this is the, uh, the tone and the volume and the output jack. Oh, I was just showing it there quickly. And then here's the, uh, the rhythm switch, they call it. It's got the two wheels. It kind of looks like a little toy car. And then this is your three-way selector. Never worked with these before. So I've got the diagram. If I could open it, there we go. It's super easy to follow. Hoagland Custom. And it's all labeled. You can't screw it up unless you just don't read the instructions first, which is pretty much what I just do here because, you know, I'm trying to follow the path and everything. But 
Um, anyways, I thought I needed all this extra wire. Turns out I don't because I just didn't look ahead, right? So anyways, so I start wiring stuff here. I'm following the diagram. I didn't screw anything up. I just added my own wiring. I thought I was doing a good job. And here's my soldering skills. You can see there my shaky hands. And there we go. Good connection. All right, do a few more. Got the black one. I'm just kind of measuring. I've got to make sure it goes all the way down to the output jack. Cutting it with my wire strippers. There we go. A little bit of soldering. This kind of soldering I don't mind doing. A little simple ones, but I mean, wiring this whole thing? No, I, I wouldn't have been into that. So I recommend this uh, pre-wired kit. Um, definitely saved me probably hours. I'm going to be honest, probably hours. Because I've done, I've done a few like three-way selectors for the Telecasters and it took me forever. So anyways, I'm routing the cable here all the way through. And then at some point I realized I didn't need to even run all those cables because if you look here, look, it's got wires coming out the other end. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just connect this one here. And here's where I realized I'm like, why did I even do that? I should have looked ahead, but really it's, it's the other one. It's the last part. So anyways, I'm looking at which pickup gets connected. The yellow, that's from the bridge pickup. And that's going to the three-way selector. So that's okay, that's not the problem. I'll show you in a second here what the problem was. This, I didn't, I didn't look ahead. That, those two cables, the white and the red, they go all the way from the bottom. You can see here I'm looking at it, I'm like, ah, okay. So I'm removing what I just did. So now I've got all this extra cable that I didn't need to buy. It was only like 10 bucks or something, but it's nice cable too. It's uh, like cloth based. Um, here we go. And then I'm just uh, connecting the stuff that I needed to connect. Just one connection there. It's pretty fun. I don't, I don't mind doing that. Here's um, two body grounds that I'm, or a couple grounds anyways. One's from the body, one's from one of the pickups. And you can see it's going to the volume pot there. It's a little blob. Good. All right. And then this is uh, everything getting pushed in and kind of routed and uh, it fits in nicely. There we go. And um, I'm just checking my connections. I will do another, another uh, resistance test later. I just wanted to see here if things were actually what they were supposed to be and things were connecting. And yeah, I had good connections. So no issues. Pretty good. I did realize um, one thing after. Um, I, I think it was uh, I needed one more body ground to the, uh, you're just listening to the looping, so, sorry about this, you know, two, it's got two layers for some reason, I don't know why, anyways, um, yeah, the metal plate where the volume and the tone controls are, it needed another ground, so I'll show that in a second here, so putting everything together, testing it all out, see if it all fits, and yeah, there we go, it's looking good, looking really good, I like it, I like it, I'm glad I chose it. Lots of screws on this thing. Man, there's so many parts on this guitar. That's the last one. Here we go. There we go. Looking good. I just wanted to show one thing. This pickguard's for an American vintage model, I think. You can see it doesn't line up perfectly. I will be able to get the trim or the bridge through it. Sorry. Um, it, it fits fine. And uh, we'll see if that causes any issues. I don't think it will, but um, I guess, you know, if I did need to cut the plastic a little bit, if I needed to get the bridge closer to the body or whatever, it's, it's not a big deal. It, it worked out. I knew it was going to fit okay. So there's just so many different options for Jaguars. So put it on the strings and uh, here's some F1 oil or maybe it's phone oil. How do you say it? I, I'm just going to call it phone oil because you, you call it in. Um, here we go. Make sure you use your Gibson. What? Why do you do that? Okay, here we go. Just putting uh, the strings in. I'm just going to show you a couple because uh, you know, maybe you've never strung a bridge like this. And this is where like the tension pulls the trim system up. It's kind of cool. And then uh, this is how I like to do my stringing. Uh, some people like to go three. I go two. Two pegs past the length that you need and then I cut. So anyways, I don't have issues with uh, the tuning. It's good. So I'm going to do the two. Here's what I was talking about. I needed to connect one more ground to there. And that's it. That's what I was missing because I did test it and I was getting like a, a buzz. So now the last item to arrive. I was waiting for this. I didn't even have it to begin with. Jazz bass knobs. I didn't even know what I was going to choose. But anyways, um, it was cheaper to get this three pack of jazz bass knobs. You can see what I'm using to connect them. Than it was to get a two pack Shakur. No, a two pack of uh, Jaguar knobs. So I don't know. 
Anyways, um, the last part, this is the most stressful part. Always the most stressful part because the neck, if you saw the price of the neck, it's $599 and I've got to drill a hole into the headstock. You get one chance, <laughs> one chance. Do not miss your opportunity. Once in a lifetime moment. So the string guide set that I bought, it gave you the option to do a couple different heights. I chose the small little metal ones and the smaller screw. So found a drill bit that's gonna fit and uh, be the right one. So this is how I do it. You know, I put some tape because, um, and then I just, I just kind of scratch it in where it's gonna go. You don't want it to slide. I've had that happen before in a previous video. My drill bit slid and made a scratch a across the headstock and it sucked. So I'm always careful not to do that again. So I'm just taking my time here. That's what could happen if you don't take your time and drill slowly, okay? That's just a warning, just a reminder, all right? That, that's what could happen. So here we go, just one little screw. And uh, we're pretty much almost all done. And just tighten the strings, voila. Oh, we're back. I thought we were done. Okay, let's take some measurements here, all the specs. The nerdy specs. Let's get the weight of the guitar. So this is everything, you know, even the trem bar. 3.883 kilograms, 8.561 pounds. This is pretty common for a Jaguar and, or a Jazzmaster. They're, they're, you know, a little bit heavier. They got a bigger body. So here's some resistance uh, measurements. That was the neck and now that's the neck and bridge. And then there's just the bridge or rhythm and lead. They use the, those terms for this for some reason. That's with the mid-tone cut on. I'll explain what that is after. That's just like a special feature. And there's the rhythm pickup selector. Anyways, let's do some neck measurements. You wanna get the specs of this American neck. I'm doing the inches and the millimeters. So you get both. Somebody suggested that in the comments. And so I thought, you know what? Yeah, I got the button there. I'll just hit the button. So put the measurement at the 12th fret and then at the last fret, so there you go. And then we'll do the thickness of the neck. So we'll take the measurement at the first fret, got 22 and then uh, 0.8815 inch. And then at the 12th fret, right there, 2.4, uh, sorry, 24 millimeter, I'm, I, I can't even see it. And then 0.9 inch, so it goes up a little bit. So it's a nice neck, I really like it. Oh my God, even more? Ah, oh, these fade outs keep fooling me. Okay, here's the setup part of the guitar. Um, normally I can take a straight edge that has, you know, it just doesn't work with this one. That's what I'm trying to say. This guitar scale length is 24 inch and the, the tool that I have is for 24 and a half and then uh, the other measurement there, you can see it doesn't line up. So I'm just taking this, uh, you know, the other way to do it is put a capo on the first fret. I've got a feeler gauge and doing 0.10. I'm just checking to see if there's any relief. I'm holding down the string at where it meets the body and checking like the seventh fret. So also the uh, the nut was already pre-cut and uh, this is what I would normally use if I needed to cut more of the nut, but I don't in this case. Uh, it was staying in tune right up at the higher frets. So I was actually really surprised. It's really cut well. I've had other nuts where I've had to do way more work. So I'm not gonna have to do that in this case. So here I'm just doing um, the tuning and intonation um, I only had to intonate a couple of the strings. Uh, I forget if it was the D and the G, I think you can see here. And so there's these adjustment screws on the bridge. And um, yeah, I guess because this bridge was probably previously set up with the original guitar, which was a Vintera 60, it's already kind of set up. So you see I'm just doing a little adjustment here. And uh, intonation is to make sure that the string stays in tune all the way up the guitar. So the open E string and then you fret it at the 12th fret and it should be the same note one octave up. So there's a lot of good videos about full setups. Um, I'm new to Jaguar setups so I'm kind of just winging it to be honest for this setup. I'm going to try it out, see how it is. If I like it I'll make some adjustments later but yeah this is always, I always do this in my videos. This is my first try at the setup and uh, just see how it goes from there. All right, now some fancy artwork. This is the uh, the concept art, and uh, then we're gonna take a look at the actual guitar, and then just some beautiful close-ups. I'm just not even gonna talk, and you can just watch. Enjoy.
Okay, I know I've talked a lot in this video, but this is one more thing. I gotta explain the controls, right? So here's the control layout. So you got this volume, and you got your tone, and you got your output jack. That's what that is, pretty standard, for most guitars. And you got three-way toggle, that's neck pickup, right? And it would control those two. And then uh, the second one is the bridge, so you can have the bridge and the neck on at the same time. And you can control the volume there. And that's just bridge, right? Just be doing that. And then that's all off. That's a mid-tone cut, so basically you're cutting some of the frequencies. So I'll try to demo that later. So you can have all three on, or you can have just some of them on, or you can, you know, get different options. And that's pretty cool. And then at the top up here, we've got this rhythm selector. And it's kind of like a, like a bassier sound. And then you got your own volume and tone control. And everything below is disabled at that point. So once you toggle that switch, you're just doing the rhythm control at the top. So it's kind of like a mellower sound. And then you got your trem system. And there you go. That's it. That's, that's the layout of the controls. So. And we're just about to get into the tones. I'm going to do some clean tones and some dirty tones. This is the amplifier. This is the microphone that I'm using. You see it's a Princeton Reverb. It's got a Cannabis Rex, an Eminence speaker, 12-inch speaker, really nice speaker. And for the dirty tones, I've got two uh, pedals that I, I use together. I've got a Tube Screw Mini and a Sweet Baby Overdrive. And they're all mic'd up with that Sennheiser. Hey, where'd you go? Anyway, where'd you go? Anyways, let's go.
There it is. There it is. Leave me some feedback in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions or anything, any kind of feedback, good and positive, good and po good or negative. Uh, you're building a Fender Jaguar. What are you going to use? That's what I'm asking you. What, what kind of parts? What color would you build? What color body? What color neck? What co you know what I mean? What am I saying? Uh, my thoughts on trying a Jaguar for the first time. Uh, this was a super fun project. It was really cool to learn all about the Jaguar. I didn't really know much about it. Definitely the most complex wiring I've ever worked with. And unless you're up for a major challenge, I recommend the pre-wired parts that I got. I actually thought the controls were gonna be more confusing, but once you learn what each switch and knob does, it's it's not that complicated, but it, it's overwhelming to see the first time. And these pickups, they definitely have a growl, for sure. The one meg pots with single coils, it's definitely unique, it's pretty cool. Definitely like it. It kind of reminds me of like a P90 sound. So you got to see the basic setup. I'm learning all about the setup of a Jaguar, how to make it play better. I'm also learning all about the inherent issues that come along with a Jaguar. Apparently the bridge buzzing issue is a common thing. The bridge buzzing thing doesn't bug me right now. It's something I'm going to work on later. But if you have any recommendations, let me know. I know there's other better bridges out there. I would not make this your first parts caster project. If you're going to try a parts caster, I would try a Tellier Strat first. And if you've done those and you're looking for something more challenging, then try this at home. That's my recommendation. That's where you should go. Start simple, build up, go for a more challenge. What could I do next? What could be more, maybe a double neck guitar or something. I don't know, I'm just mulling. All right, as always, play guitar and have fun and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. We're very happy today. Hey there, today we are assembling a Fender Jaguar pack. Pa hey there, to get, to get, good start.